it's a continuation video. We're still adding vectors together. Last time we did the easy ones. This time we're going to do the hard ones. So here we go. Okay, we talked about case one, two, three. Last time, here comes case number four at you. Case number four, okay? Last time we talked about vectors in a straight line. We talked about vectors at right angles. But the world doesn't live in right angles. Sometimes stuff is weird. What happens if you have this? Here's vector A, and here is vector B, okay? So now we're at 42 degrees. Now remember, the magnitude of those vectors is still 5 and 7, just like it was last time. So the magnitude of A, or the magnitude of A, is 5, and the magnitude of B is 7, okay? So we talked about last time, how do you add vectors together, and we talked about the tip-to-tail rule. So we can move vector B whoop, over here, and we'll put him on the end of this guy, okay? And then we connect those two together. Remember, parallelogram rule, you could do this as well, right? It doesn't matter, but you get this. Here's vector R, okay? So I've got this skinny triangle. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to erase this guy just to kind of get him out of the way so he isn't messing me up, okay? And the 42 degrees is not there anymore. I don't know where it went. Oh, yeah, 42 degrees was from vector A up to vector B. So we could say... 42 degrees is actually over here now. Okay, now, in order to solve this, because we've got a wacky triangle, we're going to have to remember some trig things, okay? So real quick, I want to give you this, and I know you're going to think, this is so elementary, but I'm telling you, I've been doing this a long time, students are bad at this, okay? And so, because the book is going to give you the absolute least amount of information you need necessary to solve these problems. So you've got to remember some trig tricks to go in there and be able to dig out what you need. Okay, so here we go. Trig review. Okay. Trig review. Number one. Number one. Um, number one is this simple, 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 a triangle. Triangle, uh, interior angles, sum to dun, 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 372 degrees. No, 180 degrees. Okay? Yeah, I remember that. So if I give you two angles, boom, you, you know the third one because it's got to go to 180. Always, every time. Number two. Come on, brain, what's number two? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I just took a vacation right there. Okay. Hey, those are some nice shoes you have on. Oh, I like that shirt you're wearing. That's nice. Your hair looks good. <laughs> oh, yeah. What is this? What is this? Complimentary angles. Okay, never mind. Okay, here's angle B. Complementary angles sum to 90 degrees. Complementary, get it? Get it? Okay. Number three, angles from the hood. Supplementary. Okay, there's A, there's B. Okay, these are supplementary. Angles, and they sum to 180 degrees. Okay, easy stuff. Number four, I like number four. Number four goes like this. If I have two lines that are parallel to each other, and I have a line like between them right there, then if this angle here is theta, so is this angle over here, and so is that angle over there. And so is that angle over there. Just little things to remember because a lot of times you don't see an angle, but if you just draw yourself some horizontal lines, you're like, oh, hey, I can figure that out. Number five. Okay. How about um, right triangles? I guess these are right because there's no such thing as wrong triangles. 
okay, this is A, this is B, this is C, okay? Now, we remember that A squared plus B squared equals a C squared. That's a Pythagorean theorem, okay? And that's pretty handy stuff. You can also remember this, that the triangle always depends, the trig functions always depend on where the angle is located, right? I'm going I'm to do something different. I'm going to put the angle up here. I'm going to call that theta, okay? We remember, do you remember Chief Sokotoa of the Triangle Tribe? Yes, you do, okay? So, ka, to, -a, okay? Which is kind of a little way, a little trick that we used to remember the trig functions, right? So sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Um, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. I'll put a big H. I think I'll put a big H. And then, of course, tan theta is equal to opposite over uh, adjacent. Okay? So in this case, right, sine of theta would be opposite over hypotenuse, A over C, right? In this case, sine theta is A over C. Uh, cosine theta is B over C. And of course, tangent is opposite, boom, boom over adjacent. So tan would be A over B. Okay, so we remember those things about right triangles. That's super easy stuff, right? How about number number six? Hmm, number six, how about this one? Okay, labeling triangles. And the way we label triangles goes like this, okay? I have the angles here, and the angles are given with little, um, I mean, sorry, the sides are given with little letters, and the angles are given big letters. So this is sine A, B, and C, and you can label it any way you want, but the next part's important. Where do the angles go? The angles, remember, are opposite the side that they belong to. So angle A is over here, right, opposite of side A. The opposite of B is over here, and this up here is C. That's how we label triangles, if you don't remember that from back in grade school. Okay, and that comes in handy in the next one. Okay, number seven. The law, law, law of, 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 cosine, sine, sines. Okay, the law of cosines. It's not just a good idea, it's the law. The law of cosines, do you remember it? Uh, not really. Well, it has cosine in it. Uh, still nothing. Okay, how about this? Uh, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Does that look familiar? Huh? Minus 2AB cosine of C, right? Now, here's the deal. Y'all can remember, y'all can remember this. You remember this all day long, right? That works for one triangle, right? Triangles is the only one it works for. Look at this, same equation, but this works for all triangles. What happens if you put a 90 degree angle from a right triangle in for C? Well, then this whole business here goes to zero. So you can't remember the thing that works for all triangles. You can only remember the thing that works for one triangle. That's kind of silly, isn't it? Okay, this is the law of cosines. Okay, so if I know, if I know side A, side B, and the angle between, because look, here's side A, here's side B, and look who's in between those two. Oh, Mr. Angle C, right? If I know those three things, then I can solve for this other side over here. So, we also, you'll see me call this the SAS law, okay? Because side, side, and an angle in between them, right? Side, angle, side. So I need to know A, angle, B, right? Okay? That's the law of cosines. That's a, that's a good one. We need to remember that. And then finally, number eight... The law, 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 of, 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 sine, sine, sine. Okay, here we go. There's an echo in here. The law of sines goes like this. Side A over sine A is equal to side B over 
sine b equals sine c over sine c. Ooh, what if you're kind of like me and you're a little bit slow, huh? and you wrote those upside down? Whoop! It's just a ratio, so no foul. It still works. That's cool, right? You can write it either way. Now, the law of sines, here's the deal on this. I need to know two things that, need, that go together. I need to either know side A and angle A, or side B and angle B, or side C and angle C. I need to know two things that go together and one other thing. And if I know that, the law of sines will tell me every side, every angle in the triangle, right? So there's two different laws. How do I apply these? Number, number nine now is the law of tangents. Do you all know the law of tangents? I don't either because there isn't one, okay? That one's still available. If y'all want to do a, a law of tangents research, send me a note. We'll be famous, okay? So we'll figure out the law of tangents. There's a, currently not one, okay? <laughs> okay. So how can we use all of this trig information that we remember from a long time ago to go back and solve that triangle right there, okay? Let's erase it and see if we can do it, okay? So let's erase some of this easy trig review stuff that we don't ever remember, okay? And let's solve this little problem here, okay? So here's what we've got. You know what? Uh, here's a line, and I know one angle, and so I, I need this interior angle in here, and I can use my supplementary angles, and this is 138 degrees, right? 180 minus 42 is 138. Now, I know side A is 5, and side B is 7, so what do I know here? For this particular triangle, I know a side, an angle, and a side, huh, side, angle, side, law of cosines, man. So here we go. So I got A's, and I got B's, and I got auras. Okay, now what is this angle right here going to be called? Well, guess what side it goes with? It goes with side R, so this is angle R. That's the one we know. This over here is angle B, and this up here is angle A. Okay, so here we go. Uh, R squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2 times A times B times the cosine of 138. Okay, now what happens when I take the cosine of a number bigger than 90? I get a negative, and the negative times a negative gives me a... That's going to turn back into a positive, isn't it? All right, calculator, where'd you go? I keep up with my calculator. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Cosine of 138 equals times 35 times negative 2 is 52.02. And then plus, plus 25 plus 49 equals 126.02. And then I got a square root it. So vector r is equal to square root answer is equal to 11.22. 11.23 actually. And that's pounds. Okay. But again, this is a vector, that is not a vector, it needs an angle, okay? Well, here's vector r, and here's horizontal, so really what we need is this right here. We need angle b. Well, oh, wait a second, now I know angle r and I know side r, those two guys go together, so I can use law of sines to get angle b, can I? Okay, so here we go. Um, 11.22 is to the sine of 138 as, who goes with B over here? Sine of B, who goes with him? Uh, seven does, okay? So, seven times the sine of 138 equals, divided by 11.22, 
three. I wrote a two on there, but it's really a three, isn't it? Okay, equals 0.417, and then I got an inverse sine of 0.417, and I get 24.65 degrees. So angle B is 24.65 degrees, okay? So that goes here. Okay, and this, my friends, is called dun, dun, da, da, polar no 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 notation notation. Okay, polar notation. We remember that, don't we? All right. That's polar notation for a vector right there. Okay. And that is how you do that. Now we come back next time. Let's go. Let's go ahead and work a problem using all these tools we've learned and see if we can put it to the test.